Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Smoke Rare Barbecue's YouTube channel. So today, tonight, and tomorrow we are smoking a whole pack of brisket. It's just under 14 and a half pounds. We're going to be doing it out there in the offset smoker, like you guys have definitely seen. We're doing the whole process here. Today we are doing a strictly uh, Texas style uh, smoke. We're doing the salt pepper, and that's going to be it for the uh, rub. We're doing with mesquite uh, wood and the uh, lump charcoal that we always do. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing going, and we'll show you guys the whole process, so keep watching. Hey everybody, welcome back. So now we're, we're just going to go ahead and get this brisket uh, packer out of the wrap, surround wrap. Right now we got the chimney uh, getting started out there. Once we do, once it gets going for a good 5-10 minutes, we're going to go we're gonna hit, throw that in the smoker, get that thing up to temp while this rests with all the rub and the uh, stuff on it. So we you guys want to get the meat, brisket, brisket, or beef up to temp before we put it out in the smoker. Um, it's better cooking that way. So, go ahead and get this out now and uh, unwrap. Like, worry about cross contamination with this. I'm just gonna wash the knife, wash my hands, wash the board after all of this. So, uh, uh, a couple times I'll watch videos. People are uh, using utensils utensils for a couple of things. This is one guy he would dip his hand in the rub, and that was like his packaged rub. Um, always be aware of what you're touching every touch of raw meat. Uh, beef's bad enough, but pork and the chicken too, especially you want, you want to watch out for that. So, uh, be aware of what you're doing. And always, sometimes I'll get plastic uh, bags with a bottle in them so I can apply the rub or apply the, uh, the sauce, whatever I needed, so you're not gonna, so you're gonna store that bag away. Remember about cross contaminating into that, into all that too, so uh, anyway. Some, some, something to think about. So I'll just go ahead and uh, unwrap all this, get it, get it uh, rinsed off, and bring you guys back when we can start showing you guys what's what on the brisket here and the, uh, the actual rubber plant too. So catch you in a little bit. All right, so we got the brisket all uh, out of the packaging, uh, rinsed off with the water, just tap down dry with some paper towels. Now we're gonna go ahead and just talk about it here. Obviously there's there's two pieces of meat in the brisket. This is the this is right here, the long part. That's called the flat. Right here, this thing is called the point. It sticks up. Um, some people sometimes when they do briskets, they will uh, cut this piece, this flat off of the point and do this separately. Um, right here, as you can see, barely there is, it's a line right here, this line of this fat right around here. It's there's no actual muscle, muscle connecting the flat from the point, it's just fat. So you can trim this down a lot when you're doing these things, or not at all. Uh, today we're gonna do a, probably like a medium trim down of the actual brisket here. Like, oh, there's a lot of silver skin on here, we're gonna, we're gonna trim up. And this is a choice brisket, not a prime, or a, you know, it's not a Wagyu brisket or something like that. Um, but it, it is better than the select brisket, so that's, that's something. Um, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and get it trimmed down. There's all this stuff right here you can see. Uh, I'm not sure what the word is for this stuff, but it looks pretty gross just looking at it. Now, I've done a brisket before, you know, briskets before, and this stuff never renders, this fat never renders down all that well. So I'm going to trim up that pretty, pretty good. Um, I'm, going to go, I'm going, to, going to go for a quarter of uh, fat thickness on the bottom part here. Um, we're gonna, people always talk about you cook fat side up, fat side down, fat cap up, fat cap down. We're gonna start fat cap down and then switch halfway after we foil it and do fat cap up. They talk about meat, rend the fat rendering down during the smoke. I figure that's gonna be happening later on in the smoke when it's getting, the internal temperature is getting hotter and getting higher. I figure that's probably be able, when is the time we actually wanna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna just go ahead now and get this thing trimmed up. Hi everybody, so um, watching a brisket, brisket your trim can be pretty boring, so I'll just show you a little diagram or picture here of why I trim so much um, or so little off of the brisket. So yeah, the flat, it's more normally the uh, thinner part, uh, the leaner part of the brisket. So the, the fat cap on the bottom, so say you're done with your, good done cooking your brisket and you're slicing it up. Uh, I've done this in the past and I've seen it this way. Um, 
the slices look absolutely amazing, the brisket looks really good, tastes really amazing, but say like the very next day, you're going to eat it, um, the fat cap, you know, it's going to be down here. And you don't want to eat, eat all that fat just, just by itself. If it's, if it's cooked or if it's in a burnt end, it's a different story. But normally you don't want to eat that. But one time I, I had a brisket and the fat cap looked more like that. I mean, it's getting to be like a third of fat from that one slice. And that's a little too much. What I would do is I pulled that off and it was, and it was, a, it was a considerable amount of fat on that. So I, I pulled, ended up pulling the fat off of it and then the meat left, it was good, but it wasn't as a complete, because you want some fat in there, like a little line maybe of fat, of rendered down fat, say that's at the bottom, reverse it, there. So when you're tasting it, you're getting some fat, but not that much, but when you have so much fat that's, that hasn't rendered out because you had, it was such a thick piece, maybe like a half inch, if not more, of, of fat, it's not gonna render down no matter how long you cook it. So that's why you like to keep it, I like to keep it at least a quarter inch um, of fat maximum on a brisket itself. So hopefully that works. And uh, so that's just a quick little video. That's a quick, quick little shot of, of how that works. All right, so we got it all trimmed up as best we could. Uh, removing some fat. We uh, scored on the side, on the underside, just a little bit. Um, some penetration of smoke from the uh, bottom because the fat side will be down for the first half of the smoke. Go ahead and uh, put some extra, some uh, olive oil over it. You know, some people use mustard, some people use uh, Worcestershire sauce. Uh, for the briskets, we like to just use the, the uh, olive oil just to not have any other flavor uh, that's beef that might be uh, different than like the standard Texas style of uh, smoking to penetrate the meat. We want, we, we want that uh, the, just the meat speak for itself with the added of the uh, salt and pepper. Now what you see here is uh, just a container. We Just a container we, we made uh, got from a former rub and we just put the salt and pepper in there. It's a lot easier to pour out onto it than a By a jar or a cup we just, Something like that. It's pretty uh, Not we're not coating it too uh, too much a pretty light coat might put some more pepper on there uh, Already, but we'll go ahead and flip this thing and uh, get the other side rubbed down as well. Now it doesn't take much olive oil to cover this whole thing, coat it. Because again, you're not. Uh, this is just to have the rub apply to the meat itself. Nothing, nothing more. That's all the rub we got. Um, I might go put some more uh, black pepper on off camera. But so next shot's gonna be uh, getting this thing on the smoker. So keep watching. All right, welcome back. So go ahead now and get the. Uh, brisket on. It's been resting a little over an hour with, with the salt pepper uh, rub on there. So let's go ahead and get it on. Alright, so in here underneath again, I, underneath the grate I put two uh, little like bread pans in there. That's to, that's to keep the uh, some water in there as well as uh, catch all the drippings too. We're planning on using some of the finishing sauce that we get from the brisket and make and use that for the burn ends too. So again, we do this at an angle here. If the, the fat member, the fat's on the bottom. The uh, points can be here, closer to the uh, output of the smoke chamber. We're doing it as low and slow. It's gonna be 225 for a very long time. This thing barely fits in here. Um, so it's gonna be like that. You wanna keep your uh, probe at least an inch away, if not more, from the meat, so you're not gonna get a, any misreadings or anything like that. Bend it around here. Okay, so here it is, going on around 6.30 at night. See you guys in a little bit. Hi right, everybody, welcome back. I'm gonna show you the, uh, the famous thin blue smoke people always talk about. You can barely see it. It's got a very faint uh, blue tint or tinge to it, whatever you wanna call it. Um, that's exactly what you're going for there. You don't want the uh, billowing white smoke. That's not good. It's gonna give you too much creosote on the meat itself and not good barbecue. This right here is exactly what kind of barbecue you want. A thin blue smoke. Nothing fancy and it's really pretty. All right, everybody, so we got it off the uh, smoker. The uh, smoke took a lot less time than we uh, ever thought it would uh, for the uh, for almost 15 pound brisket. Um, just sometimes, you know, it, it takes quicker than you think it, think it will. It's almost one right now. It's a, about three or four hours quicker than we thought it would. 
and we actually dialed down the temperature earlier on because it was cooking faster too. So this would have been done probably in 12-ish hours. I was hoping for a good 20 hours, but you know, and sometimes it doesn't happen that way. So anyway, now we're gonna go ahead and take the flat. That's this thing right here off of the uh, point. It's right, you can see the difference in uh, movement here. This is the whole flat piece down here. That's the point. It's gonna go ahead and slide a knife right in and cut. It's extremely tender. I haven't even tried it yet. Just doing. It's gonna get this uh, this flat foiled up. It smells amazing. Smell that pepper all night. So there is the flat. That's gonna go right there. Hold up, I'll do that here in a little bit. But we'll go ahead and chop up. Uh, chop up the point now in the cubes. Oh, no one's watching, go ahead and take a taste test. And it is good. And there's there's all that, there's a smoke ring, beautiful. One thing I've learned so far is I need a better knife. You know, this works, but I mean, because this stuff's so tender, I'm just ruining the cubes here, but you know, it happens. So there is that. Go ahead and Normally, you go for like an inch uh, cube of uh, brisket. Um, now that's competition standard. I don't know. I like more of a like a smaller bite of a uh, burn end for me. And, um, you know, and I'm not doing competitions right now anyway, so um, doesn't really matter to me. But just so you're aware. So what we're going to do, we are going to combine, chop these up a little better, um, the, uh, these cubes here with the uh, sauce or the fat that rendered out of the meat itself, all the juices. That's why we kept those two foil pans underneath while we're smoking too. As well, it humidifies the whole smoke chamber. It's going to be, uh, it's, got, it's going to also be used to a liquid that drips, or well, the liquid itself, that's smoke, and then the, uh, the liquid dripped out of the brisket. That's going to be used to uh, combine with this, and, that's, and then we'll cook these pork butts, continue to cook these, sorry, not burn ends, in the, uh, in that sauce. And that's going to make it, cook these probably for a good 90 minutes while this, the, uh, the point's resting. Let's go ahead, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this pork right, sorry, pour, pull this beef, and can combine that. I'll come back to you when we do that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead now and do the uh, dog test, see what the dog thinks of it. Okay. Looks like he approves. All right, so we got the uh, sauce here reduced down pretty good. Gonna go ahead and pour it into the sous tin that we got a burn end. All right, so those are going to go back out there on the smoker, maybe for about 90 minutes. All right, so it's resting now for about two hours, so go ahead and take it out of the foil and slice it up. It's a great looking bark we got on that. It didn't, it didn't, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. It didn't, uh, it's um, really a lot, probably a little, actually almost tougher than more than I wanted it, but um, uh, it didn't get, um, 
moist. Uh, sometimes people would, sometimes people say bark and get pretty moist, but that didn't happen this time, so that's good. And then uh, they say to cut it. This is how it dripped. Oh, this is how it draped off of the off of the point right there. So we can cut it um, across the grain. The grain you can see is, is going this way. So we're going to cut it just like this. You can see that the grain's going this way. This is the point was right here. Uh, here was a point that sat on top of that like that. Now, now it's the grain this way. We're going to cut it this this way across. Go ahead and get started. And there it is. There's the first piece of the point. It's, um, that just falls right off there. Falls apart. I'm gonna get this cut up a little bit. It's pretty moist. Um, look at that great smoke ring all the way around it. Looks pretty good. And you can see that layer that quarter inch bit of fat I was talking about as well. Um, it's not too overwhelming when you, take a, you want to take a bite of that and it's not too little where it's not gonna, it wouldn't have uh, affected the meat so it's all good and moist. So we're all going to get this sliced up and I'll show you guys the uh, all completed. All right everybody, so we got it all sliced up here. Um, as you can see, you know, this looks, this looks absolutely great. Amazing smoke ring there up in the top. Obviously, it doesn't add any flavor, but you know it's smoking barbecue, and it looks pretty good. And then there's just that just falls right apart. That's you know that's just falling right off there. So good smoke. I'll go ahead and guys show you the uh, burn ends here in just a little bit. So uh, keep watching. All right, that was quick. So we got the burn ends done here. They were on for just probably just under 90 minutes per to two hours. Um, didn't turn out as well as I had liked, but I mean they're still. So absolutely incredible. Um, mm, tastes amazing. Some great barbecue, great smoke. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, didn't do as many things here with the smoke as I wanted to for the video, but you know, when the the barb when the meat doesn't cooperate with you, you kind you kind of you have to adapt to that. So, thanks for watching. Please uh, comment, like, and subscribe.